And it is liftoff for yet another Starward Bound. I am Pruitt, and this is my fine cast. Uh, I can't wait to get to this. Uh, let's get around to cast and crew in just a second. But first, let us give a shout out to our lovely sponsor, Tabletop Loot. Head on over to tabletoploot.com and you use the code WebDM15 and you will get 15% off of dice, mugs, t shirts. Uh, you will not be disappointed. So go ahead and do that. Support our sponsor, supports us. Uh, so we love you. Glad you're here hanging out tonight. Let's get around to cast and crew, starting off with Greg. Oh, I'm ready. Next? No, I'm, I'm here. I'm playing Elry Tossbottle, Arcane Trickster. He is a halfling, but he's a fooling when it comes to getting into trouble. I can't wait to do more of that tonight. Um, I can't wait to have the, the show that you see, the show behind the stage. I'm here for both. It is a, a double hitter. Let's do it. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, next up, we have uh, Trey. How are you doing tonight, Trey, man? Yo, what is going on? Hey, man, once again, it's, our, it's, it's the Super Bowl for me. It's my therapy. It's the chance I get to shed this man flesh. And I'm that cool with a Kinsey half elf monk, man. There's one thing, two things he loves worrying about, man. Where's his green? Where's his paint? Oh, wait a minute. And there's a third one. And mom, I got my mom. <laughs> so I'm just ready to get this thing going, man. <laughs> awesome. Uh, we all need to work out those issues. Uh, is it, next, we have up uh, Emma. How are you doing this evening? I'm good, Pruitt. I'm happy to be here. Um, it is Tuesday before Thanksgiving, and I am having Thanksgiving with me and Jim Davis and Trogdor Burninator, the two-year-old, but I am making it as though about 30 people are coming to my house. Um, and so that means I'm going to literally get out of here and go and make some bread, and I'm very excited to be here and then go and do that. And I have been drinking because I lost RPG sports and that's what I've been doing since Saturday. So you've been drinking since Saturday? It's not true, it's a lie. This is my first drink since Saturday. But if I had had rum, if my mom had bought me rum, I would have I would have been drinking since Saturday. Because I'm well, so sorry. Uh, Grant. You, you fought, you fought <laughs> well. Don't leave Grant alone, he's fine. Uh, <laughs> You fought well, uh, but yes, uh, apologies for Team Tarask. Um, mm -hmm. Tarask. 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 <laughs> Tarask. He kind of says it like that. Um, and last but not least, uh, Kiana, how are you doing tonight? I am doing good. Um, I'm running off of quite a bit of caffeine because I was dumb <laughs> and I didn't realize that the uh, cafe gave me a peppermint latte and not a peppermint hot chocolate until I was about a third of the cup in. So this is great. I don't drink coffee at all normally. <laughs> so, this is fun. Um, it'll be fine. It'll be good. Uh, and I'm very excited to be here. 
and playing with my favorite crew in space. Uh, I am uh, playing E404, your favorite murder robot, uh, Sweet Bab, who is very confused by riddles. Um, try their best, but just just doesn't get riddles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think tonight's going to be any different, so I apologize. Great. <laughs> for putting y'all through this but you know sometimes it's fun just to watch your players squirm uh <clears throat> so uh why don't you go ahead and give us a give us a bit of a, a ship the ship's log and set the scene for tonight all right opening data file 52091 we have spent 28 days on rotome spending time to recover from the several encounters we have experienced and to help with the rebuilding efforts in the city. The ghoul had deepened his bond with his hamster, Hellion. Hilda has tinkered with the Neogi sensor and spent time with Hamilton and the crew. Elry has been spending time with Elly, often in the odd pocket dimension they call home. Meanwhile, I have spent time in the library, adding to my files and databases about the spheres in in tandem with the cool's mother and my creators. Please refer to fear file 21 and 22 for more information. On our 28th day, we all separately received a black ribbon, which appeared to have magical properties. These ribbons also had messages stating, follow his last request. However, the cool has a different message which stated, know your enemy. This aligned with our number three goal on the list of tasks that needed to be completed as we were supposed to follow Ledbetter's request to go to Darmadil about three weeks ago. After some preparations, we approached Darmadil to avoid startling the volatile creature, and we docked on the top of a stone tower though only the four of us were able to move off the ship as the black ribbons protected us from the air-sucking nature of Darmadil's atmosphere. First, we were confronted with a door with a sentient personality. It referred to itself as a doorman and required us to put in a password. After some thought, we were able to realize that it was speaking to the message that the cool received. Therefore, we spoke our names as the colloquial goes that we have to know our enemies as we know ourselves. After passing through a passageway, we came across a room filled with strange runic tiles. After many attempts to get across, with the knowledge of the hint being the key is knowing your limits, we were able to just go across by closing our eyes, or rather, me covering my sensors as I do not have abilities to close my eyes. Upon reaching the end, we were able to find a door which just opened, and a strange mist-like thing, several sounds which made no sense as we are faced with enemies that are not supposed to be here. Logically so. I am very confused. And E-404's confusion deepens. As you are in this uh, room, it's dimensions you're not sure of because of the uh, ever swirling mists around you. Just an ambient blue light. Uh, and these, these spectral versions uh, stand across from each of you. Uh, once again, across from E, there is a very familiar beholder. You can even see the hole that you punched in the back of its head uh, upon your uh, review of your memory files. Across from Dekul, there is Axum Toll. Uh, still brandishing wounds as you saw him in those last moments before E blasted the life uh, away from him. Uh, wicked grin playing across his face. Um, Hilda, you, you look to see a, a Keiko Sakal turning and wiping a fair amount of blood from her thin rapier. And she kind of whips it to the side to get the last flex and, sh and holsters the weapon, uh, giving you just a wicked grin. Uh, full of malicious intent. And across from Elry, a tall, robed figure. You cannot make out any details of their face or anatomy other than that they are humanoid. And there you stand, face to face with enemies past. For as you remember, upon walking in this room, 
the mouth ma- I'll remind you once more that the mouth ma- magic mouth said the past is always watching do any of you do anything as you're standing here looking at these these uh, spectral entities that are just as of right now they're just staring at you standing still as the mists kind of swirl around you Hilda uncomfortably uh, takes four cookies out of her pocket and stuffs them all in her mouth at the same time. <clears throat> the specter of Ke- Keiko Sakal like <laughs> kind of arches an eyebrow at that. And... That cool looks seriously into the in, into the eyes of of uh, Axum Toll, and he just he's, he's, he's asking him. Why are you here? What is this? I am with you, Dakul. I will always be with you. No, you've already been defeated. Your time here on this plane is ended. Why are you here? And, uh, before he responds, uh, Dakul, one thing you do notice, um, you notice a, almost like a, like a buzzing, the back of your perception. Like you're not sure if it's auditory, if you're feeling it, but there's an odd buzz um, as you start interacting with the specter and it's kind of giving you a, a bit of back and forth now. Is it painful? It's not painful, it's just, but it is, it's, if it, if it happened for a couple of more hours, it might become a painful, but it's one of those, it's just kind of a low, just like a, like a, almost like a hum, like the hum of electricity in the air. Um, but again, you're not sure if you can hear it or if you're feeling it, it's, it's kind of, you're not sure what sense is picking it up. Okay. Um. I, uh, the first thing, I, if, if I'm feeling something odd, I, I'm, I, the cool's going to look at his comrades, you know, look at El Ray E and, and Hilda, um, just look, not even say anything and just notice if, if there's been a change, if, uh, is, if maybe they're experiencing it. Give me a perception check. <laughs> 23. Did you say three or 23? 23. Okay. Um, you notice that the the mists around you have deepened. Uh, you can still make out your friends. They're only a, a few feet away. E four hundred four on your left, Hilda on your right. As you'll just kind of like, sorry if you aren't in that order. I just kind of put you in that order. Uh, but um, yeah, you can see them. But the mists are are, be, are like deeper now. Um. I draw my sword. You draw your sword. Is the yes. daylight helping at all? Because I cast daylight last time. Well, no, no. Like I said, uh, that's the there's an ambient light, and that's what the daylight is. Is okay. Is um, y- you could tell that there when the door opened that there was a kind of a lower light, like a much less a, a abundant, luminous, um, and y- your daylight is kind of in the back, uh, lighting all this up. But still, like I said. A, you remember last time it's like throwing headlights into a like like bright lights into a fog so it, it it you know it lights it up but it's not like the same kind of uh piercing radiance um the cool you said you draw your sword yes i draw i draw my sword uh yeah as you do that I, like axum toll ad- adopts a more like aggressive stance to meet your you uh drawing your blade how we you want to destroy me to cool you want to destroy me don't you i want to make sure you are never ever thought of again you know the type of pleasure it would give me for me to be the one to take your life yet again i will not share that pleasure with anyone else you will not be so fortunate this time around Yes, you were cheated of your vengeance, weren't you? Harboring animosities, are you? Hmm? 
And he kind of, you see him kind of look at E404 uh, as he says that. What's on the cool? Strike down your enemy with all of your anger. Have I ever told you about Darth Plagueis the Wise? <laughs> Now, hey, everybody. Everybody, just hold your horses. <clears throat> Elry the Wise has been watching all of this, and something is not right because these gaggle of assholes, and whoever that is, and he points to the person in the room, um, they would have attacked us or thrown us in a pit or had something attack us way before this big conversation. So let's leave him be. And Elry starts to flank to the right. As you say that, Elry, um, a voice uh, rings out from underneath the hood. A voice that you remember. Oh, come on, Toss Bottle. Don't you want to have one more chance? He immediately pulls his gun and fires at the head of the person that spoke. Immediately. Okay. Give me an attack roll. Uh, 15. Okay. Your bolt hits this, this specter figure uh, it, like right in the head. And the, the hood flies off, um, and you see uh, a man, a human, tall, lanky, long, angular features, um, kind of messy, ruddy like hair, uh, very, very sparse, prickly beard, trying to cover an otherwise weak chin, um, and crooked teeth, bit of an underbite, and uh, his head like flies back. Um, roll damage. Sorry, five. Five? Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, you hit him and it, his head like flies back and he like grabs his eye, looks at you, he's like, oh, so it's gonna be like that, uh, and he rushes forward and and it looks like a, you see a blade like flick out and he slashes um across your face and you reel back um you take you take two damage though what was his what was his attack what did he what did he get uh i got a 21 uh i'm gonna shield that shiznit because i've got a natural 18 now so okay i'm gonna throw the shield up and block that okay or you throw your shield up and the spectral hand goes right through your shield and you still feel the damage tear into your flesh uh but when you raise your hand there's like there's not a cut there but i still take two damage right take two damage yes Well, allow me. Can I? Um, uh, well, allowed to retort. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we're gonna we're gonna cut because uh, we're just gonna kind of do back and forth here uh, as people act. Um, but the thing is, is when you have this, you shoot him, and he comes right back. I mean, it's like the second his head snaps forward, he's moving forward, blade brandished. Um, you feel this buzzing at the back of your senses. Uh, but it is slightly, it's not like you notice it. It's a little annoying. Like it's not quite painful, but it's, uh, it's, it's almost like, uh, the, the beginnings of like a sinus headache, but at the back of your skull instead of the front. Um, seeing this action, Hilda E404, do you do anything? Hilda says to everybody, 
Don't forget why we're here. We were invited here. So either there's somebody real to kill. Let's just get on with it. It's the rudest person ever. Invites you to their house, does this shit. Okay, go. <laughs> You're full of shit. I yes, don't think. It's quite fitting that you would say something like that since you invited me to your house. And then. In good faith. And then I, I killed your, what was he? Was, you, was he your lover yet? As far as I knew Templeton, he always was always too uptight to ever give in to the desires of the flesh. She kind of does a very crappy Ledbetter impersonation. I don't like you. And uh, I hope to kill you one day. But today is not that day. Mm. She takes out a flask and she just walks right past. Okay. You walk right past? Yeah, that's what I said, Prue. Okay. You walk, uh, and as you start to pass Keiko, she begins to walk with you into the mist. Um, Flip her off. Kind of flanking, like just uh, adjacent to you. Um, and you all quickly notice uh, that the mists kind of swirl up around Hilda as she walks. Uh, so if anybody would like to follow her, I'm going to need a perception check at disadvantage because of the limited visibility. So yeah, she, he's going to follow. <laughs> Not going to let Hilda uh, go by herself. And and Hilda, as you walk forward and are talking to Keiko, you feel that same buzzing, except as you move forward, you felt it grow more intense. Um okay. And after about five or six feet, you felt the, that sensation then recede um, and almost like shift to the side of your head. Um, I, got a <laughs> I got a 13 on my perception to keep an eye on Hilda. You, you lose Hilda. God damn it. Like you, she walks into the mist and you, you're like, oh, what? and you step forward and you step forward and there's nothing there. And as you move forward, the beholder uh, begins moving alongside you. All of his eyes kind of looking up and down E, almost like uh, inspecting you. Uh, just kind of like dips his head to the side and some eyes kind of move. Mm. Looks like there's been upgrades since last I disassembled you. <laughs> You cannot logically be here. But here I am. Work that out in your processors. And hope you don't bust a fuse. <laughs> and E, you feel the same kind of... For you, I'm not sure what the sensation would be like. Um... You get a, you're starting to get some feedback in one of your sensory inputs um, as you move forward. Uh, and so, <laughs> um, and so, yeah, like as you move forward, it, again, it's almost like, like what I, like what, how I described to Hilda, you kind of sense it somewhere in front of you, but as you move forward, that sensation kind of moves to your left uh, just a bit. Um, hmm. And uh, what else? What, uh, how do how do you uh, end your little action here as you move forward uh, in pursuit of Hilda? Uh, I'm actually going to start kind of following that buzz in a sense, like wherever it moves. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, so, the cool. Eldrick shoots yes. off. Hilda's like, fuck this. <clears throat> walking into the mist. Uh, give me a perception check at disadvantage um, as both Hilda and E, E in pursuit of Hilda, uh, walk into the mist in front of you. Um, I'm 11 and a 14. So uh, that makes a 16. 16? 16? Yeah. Okay. Uh, who are you following? Hilda or E? 
Uh, who's closest? Well, they were uh, both kind of one on either side of you. Hilda started walking into the mist, then he walked in front uh, in pursuit. So I'm just saying, who who would you who were you in pursuit of, Hilda or E? Um. Oh, did did I did I say that I was in, in pursuit of both of them? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. If you're not moving, then I'll shut up. Sorry, I didn't mean to presume. Oh yeah, man. In this situation with uh with, with Axum Toll in front, I, I I doubt Dakul is paying attention to it to what E four four. Okay, Hilda you maybe see like E like walk behind Axum Toll in your peripheral, but so what what do you do in this moment? Um. Dakul walks up to the walks up to the ghost. Is it? Is it, is it like, can I see through it like your stereotypical ghost or is it, is it, it's a solid person? It's, it's really him, it's Axum. No, it's, it's, a, it's, it's solid, but uh, where it doesn't have the normal coloration, it's more, it is more of a kind of blue and white play of color uh, that is uh -huh. it's like, like a specter, but you can't see through it. Um, it seems to have a physical form, but it almost has like a, like a light glow coming off of his skin, whether that's bouncing the ambient light off or if he's putting off some kind of glow, you're not sure. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, he seems to be substantial, but you know, yeah, he doesn't look uh, the exact same as he used to. And it goes for all of yeah. these, these, these creatures. They all have similar coloring. Okay. Um, yeah. That, that, that cool notices that, um, what you just told me, mm -hmm. um, it takes a breath collects himself for a little bit. He sheets his sword. He pulls out a J. Lights it, takes a nice long pull, pushes it deliberately into the face of Aksum Tol. Towards him, walks towards Aksum Tol. Looks down at the, at the smoke, at the, that's the joint in his hand. Looks back up at Aksum Tol and proceeds to bitch slap him, saying, where is my mother? Okay. Uh, well, give me, give me an attack roll then. Minus 23, no, 24. Uh, 24 hits. <laughs> Ten, 10 points of damage. Okay. 10 points of damage. Uh, are you doing uh, the full attacks or are you just going to do the one slap? Nah, just the one. Okay. And after, after, and, and at that, at that, that extend, hopefully I can catch him in the mandible or whatever the hell he's got. Where is my mother? Okay. Yeah. You slap him across the face, heads, rocks to the side, and then just as fast as you've ever seen his head like whips back and pops you on the opposite side of the face. Um, yeah. And, uh, you take, you take five damage. Okay. Your mother, I told you I needed you to find her. I've been looking for her. We could have found her together, Dakul. We still could. Come on, Dakul. Don't you want to find her? <laughs> Don't you? As bad as I'd like to kill you yet again. What purpose do you have with my family? Your family is a means to an end. A means to an end. <laughs> hmm. Is that all you have? A little bitch slapping some smoke. I thought you better than this, Dakul. I thought you the best. I am better than this. And I know that it's all just a, a mind game. 
But if you do happen to really exist again, <laughs> it may not be in this moment. But we will meet again. That, I assure you. Daku's gonna look and see, and that's when his attention is finally gonna be broken from this asshole and see and, and, and take a look at E44 and, and Elri and, and Hilda. Uh, and uh, yeah, he's gonna focus his attention towards them. I, I don't know if that's since I've already done an action. Can I still do a movement? Yeah. Which direction yeah. are you going? Uh, once I notice that, that, that they're already leaving, uh, I'll follow uh, E44. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give me another perception check since you kind of did a whole slap and a little slap and tickle. <laughs> ah, 11. Yeah, so you, I mean, you slap Axum Tallness, he basically headbutts you back, and you, like, turn and look, and E4, it's just, it's just smoke, and you, like, look around, and you are alone. Um, you see no one else but you and Axum Toll in this, this hmm. fall. You can see only like maybe, I mean, it's hard to make out the back half of, of his body, of his large body, right? It's like that. Your visibility is like five feet before it really starts kind of going away. Okay. Well, if that's the case, if I'm going to look and see that I'm alone, I'm not going to, obviously, I'm not going to follow him back because I can't see anybody. I'm just going to slowly move backwards. Of course, while facing, while, while, while facing Axum, just, just walk backwards slowly. Okay. You slowly walk back, and that that buzzing in your in the back of your mind, um, yes. when you move forward and like slapped him, it 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 intensified, and then as you back mm -hmm. away, it it once again kind of recedes and becomes just kind of an annoyance again. Okay, uh, can I speak? Yeah, I mean, speak. Yeah, you can speak. Any, any yeah. Time. Um, yeah. So with that, um, yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna shout out for everybody's name. Uh, E, Hilda, Elri, are you here? Um, so uh, everybody give me, uh, give me a perception check at disadvantage. As to cool, even as you're yelling this, it's that kind of yelling into the, into the fog where it's like you can just hear your set, the sound deadening and scattering. Um, Hilda got a 12. Okay. Hilda, you don't hear anything. Elry 10. <laughs> Elry's a 10, and E was what, a nat one? Yeah. Okay, well, uh, yeah. So, y'all, the cool, you just hear your voice, you calling out to your friends, just echo back to yourself unanswered. Uh, cut back over to Elry. as this figure just kind of looms over you, just staring down at you with a, with a crooked tooth grin. You reap what you sow, toss bottle. You reap what you sow. Um, I'm actually going to take a page out of my brother Grant Ellis's book here, and I am going to roll. Uh, let me see here would be the best thing for me i'm gonna make a straight wisdom check here uh do you mind i, I uh, apply a dc because this is elry trying to force himself to take in more than what he's just saying he's thinking emotionally right now and i have never been able to control elry so mm -hmm. i'm going to allow the dice to do so for me yeah so, just make a wisdom safe Seven. I mean, Elry, you know who this guy is. You know what this he guy shoots is. again. Okay. Give me a give me give me a shot at with it at, at advantage because he's literally point blank. He's at a point blank. Excuse me. Uh, eighteen. That's a hit. And that is an eight. No, a three. Three. Do, do, do. Sorry, forget my modifiers. Uh, seven points of damage with the laser pistol. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So yes, much like before, you, sh you just pull your gun straight up and shoot him. 
and you catch him like right at the at the top of the of his chest like where right where it meets his neck and his head and upper part of his body snap backwards and as he does like his hand comes up and just like pops you on the chin um you take three damage Elry would twirl the gun, put it away, and pull out his rapier and advance. Okay. Do you uh, do you say anything else, or do you just is that that's what you do? No, you okay. don't talk when you're trying to kill somebody. And as you and as you advance, that that annoying buzz right at the back of your skull, it intensifies and becomes almost painful. And then you kind of feel it kind of shift a little bit, um, a little bit to the left. Uh, and as you kind of move forward. Hilda, you're walking through this fog alone with Keiko Sakal just casually strolling next to you. What is it you intend to do exactly? If you don't mind me asking. I do mind you asking. Oh, well, in any event, what is it that you intend to do? It's none of your fucking business. Well, confided in me many times while I was on your ship. I'm just, I'm feeling a bit hurt. Hmm. I'm sorry. Do you think that I'm responsible for your fucking feelings? No, no. But I'm responsible for some of yours right now, aren't I? Something that looks like you is, but I really, really, really don't think it's you. I'm just going on the fact that Hilda has a 20 wisdom and she probably knows what's up. Okay. Um, so uh, as you're walking, what are you are you walking in any pattern? What do you what do you what are you trying what are you sussing out here? I'm trying to find walls. Okay. Um are you making turns or anything? Or I'm going in one direction until I hit something. Okay. Um, preferably past where I saw, past where they were, sort of. Okay, yeah, I mean, like I said, as you walked away, she just kind of like turned and started walking alongside you. So um, again, like that sensation, it was at the back of your skull, kind of shifted to your left as you were walking. And as you keep walking, it, it swings around and becomes like at the front of your skull and and begins to weaken just a bit, but then starts as you continue to walk, uh, s stabilizing it. it kind of back where you started, where it was just kind of almost annoying, but just kind of a, a, a weird buzz that is now kind of on your face. Mm -hmm. Well, just gonna keep going as best I can. Okay, so you uh, rub it off <laughs> again. Okay, like you feel at your face and you don't feel anything. Okay. It's just this weird sensation just under your skin. All right. I'm going to start humming a song. Just okay. sort of focus on that. Okay, start humming a song and to focus on that. Mm -hmm. And Keiko begins humming along with you. Just and we're going to cut back to E404. E, what are you, what are you doing? Again, I'm kind of just following that buzz. Okay. So as you, as you move, um, it looks like it's, it's trying the, the, the feeling, are you turning? Are you, uh, like walking? Like what's, what's your pattern? Um, basically when I feel it kind of shift, Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to kind of turn in that direction and follow it. Okay. Yeah. So like when you feel it kind of shift, uh, like I said, it was at the back of your skull and it kind of shifted around to your right. Um, you, 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 do you turn, do you turn towards it or do you turn to like get it at the back of your skull again? I'm going to turn towards it. See if there's anything in that direction. Okay. So you turn towards it <clears throat> and, uh, you know, as you turn, 
the, the sensation swings around towards the front of your skull and you move that direction and the sensation kind of lessens just a bit and then start, then remains constant after a bit. And it goes back to where you can just kind of sense it again. Hmm. Interesting. Do you do anything else before the end of your turn? Is uh, my beholder friend still hanging around me? Oh yes, he's he's very interested. He's like again, he looks like he's like inspecting you, like he would inspect, you know, a piece of uh, of of uh, like uh, machinery before you know before using it. He's like the crew on the aircraft carrier pulling all the things out of the intakes and getting the plane ready to go. I mean, he's like really like observing you and it's just like mm, yes, yes, done modifications. Uh, I see. Does the position of the beholder correspond to the buzzing in any way? It, it does not seem so. It seems okay. like that buzzing only shifts when you are turning and moving. Uh, and this whole time, the beholder has been kind of swinging around and observing you from all angles. Right. And it doesn't seem it doesn't seem to to affect. OK. Yeah, he's trying very hard to ignore the boulders. They're just like, mm -hmm. just trying to focus on the sensors. To be like, okay, focus on the data. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. To cool. Back over to you, sir. Yes. Um, since I backed up, since I backed away and I was calling out for everybody's name, I didn't hear anything. Uh, no. had, did I no. notice it? Did I notice a change in, in, in the buzzing as well? Like I said, when you backed up, uh, it, it kind of lessened, like, you know, you had advanced on Axum Toll and it got more intense, but it hadn't shifted. Mm -hmm. Now that you've backed away, it's just kind of lessened and just kind of gone back to where it was at the very beginning where it just, it was just kind of a, you know, it was there. It was just kind of a low, hmm, like a low hum. Okay. Uh, yes. A cool would, would definitely, if, if he didn't hear a response from his friends and he was that close to him just moments, moments before, it would, it would be concerning. Um, and I can't see anything, hear anything. It's just fog everywhere. Can I still see Axum Toll in front of me? Oh, he's right in front of you. Yeah. Your path to him uh, is, is a little lessened, like as far as the fog. But when you look right. to left and right, I mean, the fog is just thick. Hmm. If Dakot cannot find his friends, what would he do? He would walk in the direction in the last time place he saw his friends. So um, they were, uh, before I lost focus with them, were they just to the right of me or just to the left of me? The last place I remember them being. Hilda was on your right. E44 was mm -hmm. on your left. Hilda kind of walked forward. E moved kind of to intercept interceptor, but that's no, where you kind of lost them in the fog. So like in front of you somewhere? Yeah, I would head in the last perceived direction of what I think the direction is towards Hilda. Now cool would find his captain first. But okay. meanwhile, also, also though, um, as I'm moving in, in that direction, because before I bitch slapped Axum, uh, I, I made sure I fired up one of my J's. That you and did. if you and if you and if you know Daku, you know the smell of his, of his herbs. So he's going to hopefully think that by him tugging on, pulling on it even harder than he normally does, the odor would be like a, 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 a breadcrumb trail, if you will, and head in the direction of where he last thought he saw his captain. Okay, that's, hey, that's one reason. <laughs> Never mind, I can't say that. <laughs> That's one reason to do drugs, kids. No, um, okay, yes, uh, okay, so you start moving forward. Um, are you kind of moving around Axum Toll or just kind of moving through him? Like, how Like how are you handling that? Just wondering. Nah, I'm going to want to touch this bastard. I'm going to go around. Okay. Kind of like almost, almost, if, if, if he could shoulder bump him, he would, but nah, not, not, not in this moment. He's finding his captain. Okay. Yeah. All right. So he, you just kind of move around him. And again, you, you feel that sensation kind of intensify and it gets right to the point of where it actually kind of hurts. And then you feel, you feel that, that sensation recede away from you again. Like, like, like it just, 
it, 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 it just uh, reduces in intensity as even as you're moving forward. Um, but it stays at the back of your skull. Okay. Huh. Uh, what's, what's Axum Toll doing? Is he just, he, he's right beside me? Yeah, he just, he waits till you pass by and then he walks. Mm -hmm. uh, you can feel him walking right beside, right behind you because he is a large creature. Um, mm -hmm. And so you can see in your peripheral vision, his, his front legs like, like coming up almost parallel with you and you can feel his like eel like head like kind of curving over one shoulder and then coming up over your head and over the other shoulder as he's just you just hear him like sl just lightly just breathing and chuckling in your ear <laughs> where are you going to cool you are lost you are so lost lost in the world Lost in this room. You even lost your vengeance. No. Vengeance unfulfilled will poison the soul, Dakul. My vengeance has not left me. Sino thought has persisted. Are you going to walk with me on this entire journey? You troublesome piece of work. I have always <laughs> been with you, Dakul. I have always. Since you piloted the ship, we have dreamed together, Dakul. We have fought together, Dakul. We live together, Dakul. Are you just walking in a straight line? Straight line. Okay. Just just listen to his voice and it just makes me want to just Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Straight line. All right, so you move forward. Um cutting back to you, Elry. Now that's a 19. So, a 20. Uh, 20 to hit? Uh, wisdom save. Oh, wisdom save. Uh, Elry, you, you realize, like, you shot this guy twice. Comes right back and hits you. You're not sure that this is... Uh, you finally, like, hold on to the moment. For this moment, you hold on to the thought that, like, maybe you shouldn't fight this guy. Maybe that's not, maybe that's just pointless, right? <laughs> so do what you will with this moment of clarity. Well, Elry, now that he is thinking, and this isn't the way he fights anyway, and he has twirled his gun and put it away, he halfway pulls out the rapier and slides it back in, and he is going to misty step beyond this person as far towards the direction his friends went as he can. Okay. So Elry, you misty step, pop back into existence. And that sensation, as you step through in your, in your, in your conscious mind, you feel it kind of, uh, as you kind of step through uh, the ethereal plane, that sensation for a split second becomes overwhelming. And then when you come back into the reality here, it is now like the back of your skull is on fire. And go ahead and give me a perception check. That is another 19 for a 24. You see something floating in the mist scurry out of your vision like as soon as you come into uh into back into the prime material in front of you like not 10 feet in front of you you see a small form in the mist try to scurry away from you and that feeling of burning of just like pure like it, like the worst migraine you've ever experienced is as soon as this thing like kind of skitters into the mist it starts to recede can i take a shot at it 
Uh, I will. Yes, I will let you. Uh, I will let you have a, a shot. Twelve plus what is it? Seven still. Twelve. Eight. Uh, twenty. Twenty. Uh, a twenty will. Dirty hit. twenty. Dirty twenty will hit. Five plus four nine points of force damage from the pistol. Okay. Elry, you pop your pistol out, fire off. Two things happen simultaneously. You hear uh, a, a very small screech, and then it just immediately like muffles and dis and just there's nothing. The sensation in the back of your head immediately goes away. And the one thing you had noticed as you pulled your gun up and saw this, but you did notice with that perception check in your peripheral vision right over your right shoulder was this crooked tooth under bite just smiling. It looks like he's about to say something, a jab, a parting remark, and then he just, as the feeling disappears in your skull, the specter disappears. And Elry, you are standing alone in a bank of fog with the light smell a familiar smell drifting across your uh, your nose. You you know that smell. You have that's weed. You've communed to that smell. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna cut back over to Hilda. <laughs> Hilda, mm -hmm. you are. Uh, what are you doing? Are you continuing just to walk in one direction? I'm continuing to just keep on walking in one direction if I can. If that seems like I've gone further than any room could possibly be, then... You're not, like, again, you're not sure you've not seen a wall since you've come into this place. And you've yeah. just been walking this whole time. Um, okay. And, you know, the last room you were in was like 100 feet long. And you know you've at least walked that far. Uh, but uh, give me a perception check. 12. Okay. You think you catch the faintest whiffs of of Dekul's, uh herb. Okay. She, she will call out because that's what we do in this dungeon. Dekul! Okay. You begin calling out. Um, yes. Everyone else can make a perception check now. Uh, 13. Okay. They're cool. That's an 18 for the cool. Okay. Yeah. You, the cool, you're walking along and you hear Hilda yell out, the cool, like right as you like stumble into her. <laughs> out of your fog and ah. into her fog. Um, and Hilda, you're standing there with Keiko next to you and the cool with. Axum Toll walking behind him, head kind of craned over one shoulder like this. Uh, and he, he kind of just like stumbles out of the fog and y'all just kind of intersect. Uh, oh. ah, thank you. Ah, my captain, yes, Hilda. Ah. What do you make of this? Has yours done anything to you? I mean, just just talking. What what do you mean done, done I, to you? Like aggressive attacked you. Nope, she's tried to hurt my feelings. A little bit. Yes. Oh, I think we both know I've already done that. I do not think this is what it is. This is not the real deal, and they may talk a lot. And I am not sure, but certain they are dangerous. Well, we killed Axum Toll. We know he is dead. Yes, exactly. So we know. Ah, well, the cool didn't kill me. <laughs> the other did. Oh, the guys, I wish you were real. <laughs> My dick is getting hard just thinking about breaking your fucking mandibles. <laughs> oh, cool. I didn't need to know that. I'm the only person who knows that now. 
They're not I'm real. Sad. You just said that to me. I know. It's just he knows how to push the buttons. They do. They do. Uh, where? Where is everyone else? I don't know. I have been trying to go in the same direction this whole time. And I don't hit anything. I ran into you. But I think there's something messing. Obviously, there's something messing with our senses because she is here and he is here. Well, if we are going to be tormented, we should at least be tormented together. Yes. Let us find everyone else. Pass that, Jay. This is unsettling. <laughs> In fact, I will roll you a new one. Thank you. And that is my action. <laughs> okay. And which direction are y'all going to walk? The direction that uh, Emma was, or Hilda was walking? Um, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think, I, that cool hasn't caught on to the whole buzzing head navigation thing yet. So if you have, um, well, okay. you can go on with I will, I will say this. Want. I will say this. Right before, the cool, right before you ran into Hilda, because you just, you kind of, T-boned her, right? Um, mm -hmm. You did feel that sensation swing around to your right side of your, your head. Uh, then I would absolutely say something to Hilda about it. Uh, I get the feeling that we something is either pushing us towards it or against it. It's this buzzing in my head and it keeps changing directions. I'm glad to know that somebody else is feeling that because I was starting to think I was having that stroke I was talking about before. But do you smell bread? I smell bread. It smells like oranges. Um, nope. Uh, okay. I figure maybe uh, we go with it. Let's do whatever they don't want us to do. Let's just try doing things, and if they start talking again, then we know we're doing the right thing. <clears throat> Yes, Katy. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> we will go. All right. Uh, so, uh, so I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure I didn't want, want a direction. Then, so uh, wh which direction do you think we should go? You you want to head towards the buzz? Is it is, is that that sounds kind of feels like that would be kind of like the right thing to do? Towards the buzz is usually a good life choice. What are you? <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah all right so uh that that that's that's our decision we'll we'll walk so you're gonna you, so you're gonna walk the towards the buzz so both yeah. of you are feeling yeah. the buzz kind of at the back of your head so are you turning around and walking towards that yep yeah yeah because right now it does it's not painful right like because you, no. you as far as the pool was concerned no. especially not. like once you what you do what you also you do notice is when you come to a rest uh, if it was more intense it quickly like settles back to just kind of annoying. Um, uh, yes. So yeah, they're feeling the definitely feeling the buzz. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I was I was gonna say uh, I would I would want to feel the buzz until until it becomes painful. That cool would definitely stop if, if it's painful. That's yeah. that's a big warning. Well, I mean, you are on your second J, so the buzz is pretty intense right now. Um, <laughs> so y'all both turn around and start walking uh, and you, as you turn around, you, you notice uh, that that sensation swings around to your, it's like on your face and you immediately start walking and the, the sensation actually lessens to where you can barely feel it before it kind of comes back to that same equilibrium of just kind of almost annoying is what you notice. And then as y'all, you know, you'll do this in unison. You notice like Keiko look over at Axe and be like, well, it looks like a team up. And he's like, oh, why didn't you saddle up then? And she like hops on his back and he proceeds to follow like right behind both of you um, as Keiko's like kind of sitting on his back, like riding him like a horse. They seem a little too happy. They think they matter to cool. <laughs> they really want to matter. We wouldn't be here if we didn't matter. <sighs> Well, sure, you used to. That's the point. You used to. I seem pretty relevant still, Keiko uh, says. Oh, the thing, though, Keiko, that you didn't realize, that when I meet you and you're real and I'm so happy to tell you, is that you didn't do a fucking thing. Because I'm here. I'm going to get Letter Better back. I got everybody else back. All you did was make a fucking enemy. 
Oh. You should know your enemy. I did. I told my name at the beginning of this stupid thing. <laughs> oh, this still seem a little too happy. I like your idea, Olive. Let's do something to wipe that smug grin off of his mandibles. Um. um and at that, um, Joe kind of started walking again, lighting up a new uh, a new J. We're gonna go back to E four hundred four. Uh, and, and Elry, you can go ahead and give me another, give me a perception check normal. Cause, uh, this is more, if you're, if you're going sight and sound, it's a disadvantage. If, uh, we're going smell, it's just normal. Hey, get cool. You're not smoking without me, are you? <laughs> uh, that is still a nine. Get cool. Damn it. <laughs> It was a nine. It was a nine. Right? Oh, no, no. I'm just enjoying watching Kiana laugh and try to get her perception check out. Um, okay. This is just funny. <laughs> That's fucking that one. Jesus Christ. So, Elry, you are all alone. You're all alone. You're so lost without the cool. Um, uh, and uh, you just, you're, you're wandering through, a, through an endless fog. You think you catch whiffs every now and again of Dekul's specific uh, herb? Wait, wait a minute. That's a new joint. <laughs> Damn it, Dekul. E404, uh, what, what are you doing uh, in this fog with this beholder? So now like getting even closer, like his, his disgusting, like <laughs> viscous and saliva, like, dripping out of his mouth as he's like just smiling just ah uh, yes yes many upgrades many upgrades can be done you can maybe even fix that little twitch in your head <laughs> he is still very pointedly not listening to this <laughs> okay what, um, is what is he doing uh, I'm going to kind of turn to look at this beholder. Okay. I'm just going to start walking backwards. <laughs> He's turning. So I face towards it and I'm just walking backwards as fast as I can. I'm, okay. I'm trying to see how fast this thing keeps up with me. <laughs> okay. Uh, one thing you do notice is um, you know the the sensation was kind of at the back of your head, and you mm -hmm. turn around, mm -hmm. and then start walking backwards. Yep. So when you turn around, it moves to your face, and again you start walking backwards really fast, and it intensifies. But then after a few seconds, kind of comes back down to just a, a normal observant level as you're walking backwards. And the beholder, though is like literally like right on you. Like it never, mm -hmm. it, it, it's distance from you almost. The one thing that you would notice as E404 as a, as a logical thinking machine is like it's, its range of, of distance from you did not fluctuate by more than a, 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 a tenth of an inch, right? A millimeter maybe. And it stays like right with you as you move, no matter if you fluctuate speed, um, Okay, interesting. Hmm. <laughs> I was just kind of at this point to be like, Elvi, Hilda, that cool. Are okay. you nearby? Uh, everybody make perception checks um, at disadvantage. Uh, a disadvantage? Seven. Yes. Shit, I rolled a nat 20. Uh, 13 for Dekul. Dekul, you think you hear E, but it's it's one of those things where you, for a split second, you think you hear Elry, but 
it gets lost and uh, in the in the fog itself. A nine. It's lost to the point that I just lost all perception. Like I, I wouldn't be able to kind of even halfway remember the. Right. Or... You're not. I mean, it's one of those things where like like how fog kind of messes with sound. You're not sure what direction it came from because it sounded like an echo bouncing off a wall, right? So you hear it on both sides of your head at the same time. So it's just it just it's one of those problems with a uh, with a thick bank of fog. Uh, and now we'll go back to Hilda and Dekul. Y'all, y'all are together, uh, and you've been walking this this same direction. What do you do? Uh, I'm gonna ask um, because with all the shifting and the buzzing, that's the only thing that's been consistently changing. I think the cool would, would recognize that and, and, and ask Hilda about it. And uh, Hilda is uh, this this buzzing that is in our heads. Is it is it changing for you? Here, I'll put I'll put my finger on where it is for me, and I'll move if it moves. You do the same thing. We can see if it's the same. Okay, I see. I see what you are getting at. It's here, right? Um, uh, yeah, Darko's gonna do the same thing. So I think it's behind my head, if I if I remember yeah. right. Right, right now, y'all are walking the same direction. It's on both right. ends. You feel it at the back of your at the back of your head. All right. Okay. Um, that cool. Um, hmm. Is it, it is at the exact same spot. Is mm -hmm. hmm. uh, yeah. was it always in the same spot when you were looking when before I ran into you? I think it it moved. Did it not? Uh, yeah. I tell you what. Go ahead and give me just a wisdom check, Hilda. You have a, you have a, you're, you're very wise. Both of you can give me a wisdom check. <laughs> I got a nine. Uh, nine. Uh, uh, am I rolling at disadvantage? No, no, that's no, no, no. This is just a wisdom. Okay. Just roll a d20 and add your wisdom modifier. Okay. Uh, nine. Nine. Twenty-three. Hey. All right. Damn. Uh, okay, Nicole, you, you will notice this. Y'all have moved around enough. It always... The, the buzzing while you're moving or, st or, or, or stable, static, it always tries to stay at the back. Sometimes when you're moving, it will, it will shift. Like there was a time where you, you, you move towards it and it kind of shifted. Like it was, it, it was at the back and it shifted to the side of your face and then you kept wow. moving. Uh, and it, it, it always tries to stay with you. Like the buzzing will, will stay consistent. But anytime you come to a stop, Eventually, it swings back around to the back, and it, it's almost like uh, almost like Google Maps. It always tries to write itself right uh, at the back. And so, like right now, both of you are uh, are at the it's at the back of your head. Okay, and and of course, our tormentors are are they still in front of us? Have they been like backpedaling while they've been talking? To just uh, no, they were they were just kind of following you, like right behind you. Uh, Keiko hopped up on Axum Tolls you know, his, his back and he's just, he's been following right behind you. His head just kind of swings around over your shoulder and then over Hilda's. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. He's going to kind of like kind of push Axum's face away in a, in a sense, because he knows it's, it's, he knows it's an annoyance. He's going to look over, Daku's going to look over to Hilda and say, Do you? but very low, very low, almost a whisper. Do you still have any more of your cookies? Nicole, I always have cookies. I've had cookies this whole time. And one to me. So have I. Okay, I hand you a cookie. Um. Oh. Nicole's gonna. Is that a prudel? <laughs> no, this is oatmeal peanut, oatmeal chocolate chip. Oh God damn it! They're amazing. That's the best one. That's the first one you perfected. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's the best. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, da, da cool. <laughs> Are you done munching, man? <laughs> you gave me the munches. No, so, uh, da, da cool is gonna take about a three right now. Just moving on up to a four. <laughs> there it is. We're going okay. to a four. Everybody, we're going to DefCon four. We're going to DefCon four. We need some more de <laughs> dick jokes right there. <laughs> 
I want a cookie um, too, Mad Rogue. I want a cookie too. I'm sorry, Duco. Nah. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. It's all good. I'm over here. I sound like I'm remixing. I'm like, da, 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 da. Huh? <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> The, the, the cool is gonna eat the cookie and turn until he feels that that buzzing um that buzzing sensation uh hit like him square on the face. Uh-huh. Okay. And he's gonna just and he's just gonna throw the cookie as hard as he can in that direction. Maybe it's <laughs> whatever it is, it might be hungry. The cool. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh oh. That, that was a perfectly good cookie. It was a perfectly good cookie and it sails. You think you hear like a ding ding, like in the distance? And is the buzzing sensation still on the front of my face? Yes, it is now on the front of your face. Uh, Emma, mm -hmm. uh, unless you turned around, it's still on the back of your skull. I will turn around with the cool. It's on the front of your face. Yeah, and then, and because I've noticed that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell Hilda that, that funny feeling. It is right here now. Let's mm -hmm. run. To cool. um, Let's run to where it is. Uh, hang on. Greg. Uh, yeah, Greg, you, you're just walking along and about five feet in front of you, a cookie just like doom, 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 and lands. I smell it. I don't pick it up. I get down and smell it. It smells like one of the cookies that uh, that uh, Hilda. Did you make them, or did you have Ol did you have Olga make them? Oh, Hilda! Hilda's incapable of making almost anything. It's all yeah, Olga. You you know one of Olga's cookies, and you know that Hilda always keeps a stash. You see her uh, stashing cookies for any kind of uh, off off ship uh, escapade. This is an Olga original, yeah. Hilda. <laughs> Hilda, you, give me a give me a perception check. I rolled two nineteens, so um, you, that's you a hear, you, you uh, okay. You and Dakota, you, you hear Elry yelling Hilda from right in front of you, <laughs> <laughs> from where uh, it sounds you know the direction that that Dakul threw the cookie. I will walk in that direction, Elry. Okay. Uh, Hilda. Hil <laughs> Hilda. Um, Hilda. So you walk Hilda. in that direction. That that buzzing. Uh, it 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 stays on your face, but it lessens as you walk, uh, and then kind of it lowers almost to an imperceptible like vibration, and then comes back up to almost annoying after a few seconds. And to cool, you Do see I... Hilda walking the direction you threw the cookie and yelling Ellery. Uh, <laughs> Do I see knew those cookies? Yeah, I'm, I'm following my captain. Okay, same thing. You feel those. Uh, but, but of course, I'm going to ask. I'm going to say, I'm going to ask, like, what's going, what's going on? Hilda, what is it? It's Ellery. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that excitement's going to definitely get that cool ready. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, man. I'm walking with her. Damn, All right. Nearsky. You uh, again. You feel the same thing. The the sensation lessens for a few seconds, and then it ramps back up to almost annoying um, after a few seconds. And uh, you move forward. Uh, it's only about 15, 20 feet, uh, and then you see Elry. Like Elry, what are you doing to the cookie? <laughs> I have it. Oh, you have it. Yeah. Um, when I walk towards them, um, he's going to run as if he's going to embrace them. Mm -hmm. And as he runs as if he's going to embrace them, he's going to yell out when he gets about five feet from them. Is the pain in the front of your head or the back? Quick! Is it in the front? It's in the front, still. It's in the front. Okay, he's going to vault past them. And I'd like to make an acrobatics to see how far I could vault past them. And he's looking skyward. Okay. Uh, okay. Give me a, yeah. Give me an acrobatics as Elry comes like runs up and totally like parkours, like 
off Hilda's shoulder first and then to Cools as he kind of makes his way up the height. Yep. That is a 27. And he's like, just does a double front flip over Axum Toll, over uh, Keiko Sakal, as they just kind of like watch him, their heads tilt back, tilt skyward. And give me, uh, give me a quick perception check, Ellie. That's where things go wrong. Just normal. Uh, I'm going to use a point of luck. Okay. That's worse. Uh, so yeah, uh, eight. Eight. Okay. You, you jump forward, um, and you don't see anything, but you definitely hear, uh, a weird, like skittering noise, like through the fog. Like it's just, you're like, was that movement or was that just a swirl? You're not sure, but you definitely hear something. Can I take a shot? Sure, you can make a shot at disadvantage. 17. I won't do the modifiers yet. 13. Uh, 21 with disadvantage. Oh. Okay, roll damage. Eight. Force damage. Um, call Otter even to cool. Odd. Odd. All right. Uh, so Elry like jumps, like I said, he parkours up Hilda and to cool and flip flips forward, pulls out his pistol and shoots. And you all hear just a very muffled, like, like a, like just a quick noise of something dying. Um, and Hilda, the sensation disappears from your head. And Keiko Sokol just, uh, as you are just standing there and like, look back, you see her just kind of fade from view. Um, with still just a smug expression on her face, staring daggers at you. Elry will walk back up to the group as he's trying to gain a better perspective now. And as he walks up twirling his pistol, he's going to say, hey, where's that thing I fucked up? <laughs> and he's going to look and goes, oh, there's Axum. <laughs> Guess the thing I fucked up is gone. Keiko. <laughs> Oh, that's two times. Um, you got two one last time. <laughs> um, so he's going to circle to cool and all right, to cool quick. Hand me that J. Uh, the cool is taking this all in. It is happening so quickly. Uh, he, he hands Eldie the J. What are you doing? Okay, I'm smoking your joint. <laughs> what did you do before? That? Uh, Keiko's gone. Also, uh, E four four. Give me a give me a perception check. Just a regular. That's a twenty one. Finally, uh, you clearly see a, a bolt of force fly, kind of past you uh, at an angle, um, just in front of you to behind you, kind of across your body, like just. It, from where you're standing, if you look, uh, if you went your two, like your, your two o'clock, it, it came from that direction, like clearly. Yeah, I'm going to start moving towards that direction. Okay. Um, and so it's the same thing as, as, as everything else. You're, you're walking, that sensation kind of swings back to behind your head. But um, you draw closer and you feel it kind of swing around to the left side of your head as, as you're your party comes into focus out of the fog and then uh, kind of moves where it's like on your face as you move up to the party. What were you shooting at? Me? Well, yes, you are the only one with a gun. Oh, I see the fog has made you saucy, E-404. Well, I, don't I got lost. <laughs> Sorry. So, okay, so we need to find a way to kill this thing. And we need to figure out a way to kill Axum butthole. Yep. So it's let's... Mm -hmm. Uh... uh E-404, do you have a weird sensory problem in either your frontal lobe or your rear cortex or something? 
Yes, I have been testing to see if there is any correlation with the strange visions or whatever else these non-corporeal things are. Oh, they're corporeal. I put a couple holes in them, I think. Anywho, let me try something. Where is it? Front or back? Front or back, E? <laughs> he just points. He just points forward. <laughs> here in your forehead. Yes, right here. Okay, oh, he's gonna vault off E four hundred four behind, and again skeet shoot. He's just going through the air looking for something to. Okay, shoot. Uh, give me a quick perception check as you vault forward. Um... Oh, that's better. Sixteen plus five is a twenty-one. Uh, 21. Okay. This is the first time you think you've clearly got a view of what this is and what you see. You, you remember the fight against Axum Toll and what you see, you're almost sure is a Neogi hatchling, but it's albino. Its skin is completely white. Its eyes are like dead milky pupils. And it's just kind of like looking uh, you see it kind of looking in your general direction, but not with eyes that can't really see you. But as you approach, you, you see fear and it begins to move scurry backwards. Like it's legs kicking in the air and it's like it's it's moving on something. And you, you actually notice that it's moving on the fog itself, like almost like this is some kind of web that otherwise y'all are on it. you are unaffected by other than vision and sound. But this thing is literally running on the fog. And you have a clear shot um, as you see this. Uh, it comes into view. So you can make a just a regular attack. Shit, I'm going to spend my second point of luck. Roll the exact same thing. Uh, that's an 11. 11, yeah. You, you shoot at this thing, and your bolt flies right past it. Um, but I will say this, you see it clearly. So it looks like it's trying to scurry uh, perpendicular to where E's standing and your kind of your your path towards it from E. It's kind of running to your right. It's scurrying off. Do you stay with it? Um, as y'all see E, Elry kind of just vault into the fog. Um, you do know that you run the risk of like losing your friends in the fog if you chase this. Right, thing. right. You'd hear a flip, a shot go off. Shit! <laughs> <laughs> you come back in. Okay, E404, hold on. Everybody, in a nutshell, there are wormy things flying behind you that are making you see these assholes. Give me a second. Uh, uh, the cool front or back? Uh, front. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's gonna jump and bounce off of his shoulders and try to skeet again, looking right. for another one of those worms. All right, uh, rinse and repeat. Give me a perception check first to see if you can spot it uh, as you're flying through the air. Fifteen perception. Okay, you 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 can see about where this thing is uh, enough to make a normal attack. You can't really make out the details uh, like the last one. Oh, you've got to be shit as my third three in a fucking row. I'm spending my last point of luck. Screw it. <laughs> I don't give a shit. That's a nat one. I'm going to re-roll that because I'm a halfling. And you haven't re-rolled a one yet. <laughs> um, I'm not even sure. Uh, 17. Nine 17 plus eight. Yep. 17 Jeez. hits. Blowing everything. Okay, that's an eight plus a four, 12. Yeah, so you fire this thing off uh, and, and back at you to cool. Uh, you know, Axum Toll's just still been just staring at you. You will never have your vengeance. And right in the middle of the word vengeance, he winks out of existence and the feeling disappears. Yeah, fuck that <laughs> guy. Okay, E404. <laughs> I'm not feeling very lucky, but front or back, pull. Uh, yeah, E44, you had felt the sensation kind of shift on your mm. face uh, just to the side. But since Elry kind of ran off the other direction, it has settled back uh, on uh, the front of in your faceplate. Again, points to the front. But e <laughs> yeah, points to the front. All right. Okay. Everybody pretend like I do this. And he runs and jumps. And <laughs> okay. 13 plus five is 18 perception. 
you yeah you see this thing clear once again and again it's sensation it it starts scurry trying to scurry away 18 to hit and a seven for 11 damage okay and with this last shot or you 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 draw a bead right on this thing and it never re- it has a chance to react as your bolt flies right through it and you kind of you see its body just almost vaporize and as the as it drifts to the ground the the pieces never quite reach the ground which you now see the fog itself is beginning to recede um and once again you can see the same kind of stone floor uh as in the last room uh, and the fog finally completely recedes and y'all are all in a 50 by 50 stone room with one door behind you and one door in front of you sorry i'm usually better than that but i got really scared when i was by myself <laughs> takes courage to admit that Ellery. it does we're all here i'm gonna say this again what kind of fucking rude wizard does this to people he invites to his house it's fucking bullshit dick monsters doing things with vision and perception rude I hate this place. Where, where do we go now? Uh, is are there are there any doors anywhere or mm-hmm. windows or there there? Okay. It, it, nope. It is a fifty by fifty, you know, uh, twenty okay. foot tall ceiling, and there's a door behind you and a door in front of you. Now you're not sure which one of those you came in. There are uh, from here you you're looking, and there are no visible handles. It's just the same closed eye that you've seen on on both on the either side of any door you've seen in here. Hmm. Which one? Uh, that cool walks uh, to a door. Um, yeah, the one the closest one he's facing. Okay. Uh, he's going to look back <laughs> at his crew. Should I open it? Yeah, why not? Uh, Sometimes you got to open a door. Yeah, and he, uh, he opens the door. <laughs> okay, you reach your hand out, uh, and as you reach your hand out, a handle appears for you to uh, be able to manipulate. Hmm. My handle opened, came, yeah. I'm opening the door. (laughs) You turn the handle and the door, you turn the handle and the door glides open effortlessly. A dark hallway awaits you, much like uh, the last couple doorways you've walked through. It's, it's leading to another room, like the last. Of course. Is there any fog? You don't see any fog. No! Are there any little dick monsters? Or keys? Or mosaics? Or smart ass doors? No dicks! Just the hallway. No blades, no bows, no weapons were left here. Um, all right. Um, D- can I find the cookie that I cast daylight on? <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Well, the fog recedes. There's another cookie there. All right. I will pick up that cookie and throw it into the next room. Okay, you throw it into the darkness, and after it disappears into the darkness, not even a half second, a second maybe, you hear it like hit against something and then fall to the ground. Does it look like anything? Can we see anything? I mean, you, y'all, as, from where you are, you're looking into a dark hallway that literally, like the last one, goes into complete blackness. Like you can't see past the darkness even with your dark vision even though i i cast the uh no no the the daylight daylight spell is no longer on your cookie oh it's not yeah 
You just the, the cookie was there. Well, then I would have just eaten the cookie. I wouldn't have thrown. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I apologize. I will allow you to, to to retcon that. I will eat the cookie. Hilda, you eat the cookie. Hang on. It's delicious. Yep, it's delicious. I confirm that. Buttery falls apart, melts in your mouth. It's perfect. You take eleven delicious damage to your taste buds. I had I had a quarter pound to my weight. <laughs> You're that buttery. Okay. You are okay. now encumbered. Do y'all walk uh, into the hallway? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Already on walk this forward night. and it's it's only 15, 20 feet in. Uh, it's very, very dark until you come upon another, yet another wooden door with a closed eye on it. Uh, and there are, there's a handle on each side. Yep. Uh, Guess we got to open it. Cool. Trey's really role play. <laughs> um, does anybody uh, move, move to open the door? I move to open the door. Okay. You reach out uh, to open this door and the handle turns of its own volition and the doors swing open into, uh, and immediately you feel the warmth of a fire and you can smell the smell of cooking food maybe. Not sure, but it smells kind of like chicken, maybe duck. You're not sure. Some fa something foul, definitely. Um, and you walk into this room, and it is a very small. Uh, it almost looks like a wizard's study. Fireplace uh, on the opposite wall of the door you're entering. On the right side, um, you can see a a a bed, maybe an armoire. Uh, and a, a foot locker at the foot of the bed. On the left, you can see you can see a large table with various beakers, uh, burners going, you know, all kinds of flasks and flutes, and there's liquids bubbling up. Um, there's another like a lectern, like a reading lectern with lar with a large tome open. Uh, on the wall, there's various scraps of like parchment. I mean, it looks like a almost like a murder board uh, with some string attached from one place to another. Um, and this, this runs into a corner. Um, and you are in this room. You look over, uh, uh, over the fire. There's a pot with maybe like, like I said, there's, there's a, there's a pot over the fire with something bubbling, uh, in the pot itself. Is this, uh, the only door into the room? Is there another door that we see? Um, you can see another door on the opposite wall to the right of the fireplace, uh, closer to the corner. Um, it's a very small, it's just a normal sized, uh, what you've been going through is kind of ornate wooden door, double doors. This is just a, like a normal, like bedroom door, um, or something like that. And as y'all come in, uh, the door swings open and in walks in, um, an unassuming half elf. He comes in with his gray robes. Um, at his chest, you can see a symbol. It's the closed eye. Uh, and he walks out and says, um, well, y'all did that quicker than most. Well done. I'll reshoot it. I know that trick. <laughs> Do you, does Elry really shoot him? No, no, okay. but Elry <laughs> is going to uh, pull his gun out and uh, just, he knows that they probably reached the end here, but he's acting as if they're in another one of the tests. Ah. So he's going to be like a real asshole. Hilda does Where that too. She armed. We got to shoot something. Right. Yep. Oh, well. Who's the asshole that invited us here and then put us through a bunch of stupid shit? Oh, well, that would that would be me. I am uh, Quincent Basilon. 
your name explains it. That it does. That is the name of an asshole. Well, I've been called worse, but um, I guess the term would be applicable uh, in your situation. Normally, those that uh, come through our tests here, they do so uh, knowing what they uh, are in for. But seeing as how there were four of you, I figured you could handle it. So you did so quite easily, in fact. Think of going through all that alone. That's you invited us. You invited well, technically, us, Templeton Ledbetter invited you. I'm normally a very private person, but um, his uh, disappearance has uh, brought a complication. So it was necessary to bring you here. I will take out the black ribbon. Yeah, like, did did Ledbetter give you this? Did did no. Ledbetter give us this? No, I, I I gave you that, so you could you could come here. I knew of his invitation, so seeing as how it was uh, a dying wish, though I can tell you he is not dead. Um, but well, no shit, he's in he's in our hold, acting weird. Yes, his from as much as I can tell, his soul is being prevented from returning to its body. I, I do not know the exact location, but I have a good idea. For you see, Templeton and I, we are part of an organization. We are called the Silent Eyes. And the purpose of our organization is to fight aberrations of every kind. I believe that you have had more than uh, a few scrapes with uh, various aberrations, yes? Daniogi? If you mean, if you mean Keiko Sakal, yes. Well, she is uh, aberrant for sure, but uh, not sure the full... Well, she thinks like one. I agree. You are right, Elry. Thanks. You're, you're quite welcome. But the purpose of our organization is to fight these at every turn. I've dedicated my life and Templeton dedicated his. Being so, Secrecy of, is of the utmost importance. These tests that you uh, were put through, I apologize, but the last one in particular is a, uh, an aberrant version of Neogi. They are otherwise unharm. They don't really harm you. You harm yourself by fighting them. I think that some of you started to pick up on that. But you must learn your enemy. You must know your enemy. They will use your past against you. They will use everything you know. They watch you constantly. I feel as though that message could have been conveyed in a more concise way. Yes, but um, I'm one for grandiosity. It's, uh, it's a hallmark of a spy. You don't normally get to make a splash. But... I had to be sure you were worth the, uh, the knowledge I'm about to give you. Because um, I've been searching for the lithids. It is mainly what I fight. Even though they pose as allies to the FTL, to the dwarves. They have in the past. They helped fight the beholders in the last war. But they are the greatest enemy threatening us. Threatening every sphere. I have been searching for bases of the Elithids. I know that they, they have a couple in this quadrant, but I haven't been able to find them specifically. Perhaps you could help with that. Why would we? Well, um, as far as I know, have you not tussled with uh, at least one a lithid? Calls himself the Overseer. 
maybe, but you still haven't explained why we would help you. Um, because I would like to help you and we could help each other. Keep talking. Well, as you can see, and he kind of turns around in motions and he kind of pulls aside, uh, pulls out one map and lays it out. And he shows you a section of, of this part of space between Neros and Toho. Uh, and if you kind of see on the, on the screen there, these two uh, sectors here, I know that the Illithids have bases in these areas. I'm not exactly sure. Um, there are, there are troubling signs that I believe that the overseer is building an army, but I'm not sure as to what purpose yet. Any and all information that you have uh, could be helpful. I believe that we ran into some prototypes of this army, perhaps? Yes. Prototypes, were they, did they have abilities? Yes, it seemed that they had something I do not remember quite clearly, as my data from that was corrupted. But, Elvi, I believe you were witness to that, correct? Thanks for putting me on the spot, E404. But yeah, I remember them having like some type of like shoot 'em up stuff coming out of their hands. And um, I wasn't really fighting those guys. I was fighting, you know, Dick Fingerbeard. And he blew up sort of and then disappeared. And then I shot the fucking ear Haskell Harkin. And yeah, just as a lot of confusion. A lot of death, mostly on their end. Well, that is good. You are proving yourself every time that you defeat them. That also makes you a greater enemy to them. Yaku pulls out his sword um, with the uh, with the gem in it, and uh, they use a type of technology like this. Um, he's not going to hand his sword to him because he doesn't know this guy. But right. uh, pointing out in front of him um, and just, just let him know as, as, yeah, we know what you're talking about. Um, oh. And he, he like looks at it um, and he starts to make the motion like arcane motions but he, then he stops and then um, do you mind if I use the site to view this weapon? Yes, you and me. Thank you. And he mutters some spe some some words to a spell, and his eyes take on a soft glow as he like looks over it, and um, it's like ah, oh. hmm. This allows you to uh, transpose yourself. Yes. Yes, hmm. like a bamf. Yes, a bamf. I believe that is the technical term. It smells of rotten eggs. Um. Do you, and then he looks at the blade and he's like, ah, that is good too. You can touch those that are uh, in the ethereal plane with this blade as well. Did you, were you aware of that? Tell me more. <laughs> well, it is often the, uh, the path of the uh, aberration to uh, use the ethereal plane as a means of escape. And you have the ability <clears throat> to uh, still fight them. This is a mighty weapon. Ah, he, he gives a uh, sly look over to, to Hilda and Elodie. Ah. Could it, if, could it be a place where dragons go? And he, he kind of cocks his head at that. He's like, dragons? Yeah. I mean, there are ethereal dragons, yes. 
kind of blue, they glow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is, hmm. I mean, they do exist. Yes. Some, if they can find them, uh, use them as pets or some capture them. I'm very interested. What these uh, aberrations, as you call, they have been in cahoots and other adventures we have had before here. Hmm. Yes. Like what? What aberrations have you fought? Then, uh, then he's gonna look over it. He's gonna look over it. Um, um, I'm sorry, Elry. It, it, it's kind of like. Am I supposed? Am I taking notes for the whole fucking group now? Every time there's a no. question, you know I pay the least uh, amount of attention. I'm not even paying attention. You know right I have now. a tendency to, to run my mouth unnecessarily. No, you don't. You're doing great. What do you want? Uh, all right. So, uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, Matt. We are looking for somebody who has done us grave harm, who escaped on a blue dragon into the ethereal plane. They hold another person as we are looking for. Oh, shoot. Keiko, right? It's Keiko, right? Mm -hmm. No, it's not Keiko. Yeah, it is Keiko. It is Keiko. Yeah, I'm sorry. Keiko yeah, yeah. and Krill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes, they are collaborators. So you know their whereabouts is what you are telling us. I believe that their whereabouts are at one of these bases. I believe that they are working with the overseer. I have a lot of conjecture. I have a lot of pieces of this puzzle. I believe that you have some pieces, so. They definitely do. That cool's looking at a, a captain like, we need to find these people. This must have some closure. Revenge. Yes. All right. Okay. Let's get a huddle. Let's get a huddle in here. Huddle up. Okay. <laughs> it's, four or four. It's huddle. Huddle. Let's huddle. All right. And he Hilda goes over and start, he goes over there and starts stirring the stew and like he pulls out like four bowls and starts filling it up while you are huddling up. That bastard cannot get away. He cannot wreck all of this chaos. And not to pay. Okay, do you see this map with the, the red circle on it? I recall that this is the second time I've seen a map like this with a red circle. It means that that's that dead space place, remember? That we were going to go check oh. anyway? Yes, the one that showed up on the Neogi life, life thing. I don't know. I can't remember that part. All I know I is that, that I've seen this circle before. And I think that if we go to this circle that uh, we can do like two different things and like we can double up on our side quests. You mean we could kill two space birds with one space stone? Yeah. Yes. I think that that would be the spaciest thing to do. Well, fucking space. Let's do that. Let's space it up. But I, first... I, well, hold on. Does he... He knows about Ellie, right? There is a connection between our deceased friend and him protecting Ellie and him, I believe. Do we want to know more about her? It, the sheep. Maybe, mostly. What I want is if this guy knows what happened to Ledbetter and he can help. Then he should do that before we do anything that helps him. Even more excellent of a question. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, you want me to ask? Yeah. He turns for uh, Darko. Look, looks at the wizard. Uh, can you fix our fiend? What do you mean? Fix your friend. He is alive, but not really. You spoke of his soul. Yes, I believe. Do you have soul. access to it? Yes, I believe that his soul is being held uh, as held prisoner. Um, 
but I do not know where. I believe that Keiko and Krill are working with the Illithids. And I believe that the Illithids are in, in one of these two spots. Do you think that maybe the soul is also inside one of these red circles? Yes. Yes, Elry. I believe it is. Shit, that's three things. So. That's three space birds. Three space quests. Do you have anything that could assist with this? Should we tell him about Ellie? <laughs> no. I know, I know about the entity in your ship, yes. <laughs> he just he just says matter factly. <laughs> my, my contact though in the Shadowfell has gone quiet. So I do not know what she is. I have made inquiries though. I oh, I'm at a loss awesome. here. I think the red circles are our best bet. Um, I'd like to go, but I'll take a bowl of whatever shit you're serving up here. It smells delicious. I'm and not I eating. Scared, and I peed a little bit back in the fog room. All right. Um, yeah. I, I wanted, he, he hands you a bowl and he's like, he's like, just has them kind of on the, just the fireplace mantle. Like he's just kind of set them out and steam wafts up and they smell delicious. And he like hands one to Elry and he's just sitting there and he's taking some, he's eating some while he's talking to you. Um, I have my mage hand feed me. I just occasionally blow on the spoon before I eat it. Yeah. It, it's, it's delicious. It is some sort of uh, duck soup um, or stew, uh, but it's, it's quite delicious. This isn't like people or anything, is it? No, I believe it is duck. <laughs> okay. I do not eat people anymore. Hey, nowadays I gotta ask. He, he chuckles at a obvious joke. <laughs> I, I stepped on your line there and I apologize. That was a good one. It's quite all right. We're not used to working together. <laughs> <laughs> How, how long of a travel is it uh, to either? To the, uh, it? Well, to the dearth is one thing, but that area of space, I assume you've been told at least, is the dearth. And Yes. Um, well, travel to it is easy. Travel in it, that is why it is so hard to find, because you have to have the right ship, which I believe you do. You have to have the right crew, which I believe you do. To the dearth. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so as he's uh, sitting there eating, do any of your rest of you eat? Do you? What do y'all do? Yeah, uh, Elry's definitely eating. So if you've got poison in it, now's the time to make me roll that con check. <laughs> No, you have a delicious meal, and that's it. You're full at the end of it. That's Hilda's it. not touching anything. Okay, Hilda's bowl goes cool. The, the cool is going to ask, is there any information or items that can make this a bit easier? Well, um, uh, yes, I, uh, I could tell you uh, a few things. That, let me make sure I've told you everything I know. Yes. Actually, I have told you everything that I know, like, right now. Um, <laughs> sorry, I had to look at my notes. Um, well, my immersion is shot. <laughs> you know what you say? <laughs> Um, so anyway, uh, unless there's, is there anything else that y'all would like to prefer? Monk, chill out, man. Jesus Christ. Uh, I am... so let me get this straight. You are telling us that we should go to a place that we were going to go to anyway. 
And but I was merely informing you of who I believe is there. So I guess I was giving you a heads up that I think the Illithids have a base uh, in one or both of these spots. Well, that makes sense. I mean, we already thought Niyogi were there, didn't we? Do, do you think Niyogi are there? By Why so? Well, I mean, we had a whole plan to go there because we found something. Uh, what did it's you not find? mine to tell, Nicole, but... What did I find? Hi. What did you find? Um, well, oh see, God. here's the part where we can help oh. you. If you help yeah. us. I, I, you understand that I have oh. information that I've given you. Mm -hmm. um, if you have information, then perhaps we can put that together and we can learn yeah. new information. New information can come to light, man. Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, we, but we, we, picked, we picked up a nice guy that can detect this, the old. Wait a minute. This kumbaya shit went out the window in the fog room. If we were going to sit around and talk nicey, we wouldn't have to go through the fucking fog room. Exactly. We and now That's we're here. Hilda's out with a bunch of cookies. I only got like half a joint. I got scared. I peed a little. Now we're here. The soup is delicious, though. He 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 like pops open a uh, a a silver case and pops out a perfectly rolled uh, cylinder, and he hands you uh, here. Ellery, oh, don't. You can't trust him. Don't. What is this? And he like. He actually like rolls his eyes and he takes another one out and pops it on his tin and pops it, lights a, some flame produces from somewhere. And he is takes this a them silver all. fucking joint. Is this a joint tube? Is this a single hit joint tube? The f and he takes a huge right. hit. The kumbaya shit's back on the table, everybody, I guess. Fire me up with your magic fingers. And he just kind of goes over and snaps his fingers and a little flame lights the end of your uh, of your J. Again, I apologize, but um, they were tests and you passed them. This is some first rate narcissistic relationship problem bullshit. Bullshit. Um, I'm going to have your soup, Hilda. <laughs> that's fine. Here, I brought you an extra pair of pants. Ungrateful bastard, smoking all the stuff with the guy we can't trust. Oh, well, you, you should really trust no one, but we are on the same side in this. I don't know that, because all the other people who've ever been on my side mm -hmm. don't put me through a bunch of dumb tests. When they no, they lie to your face house. and pretend to be your friend. Exactly. In the back. I, on the other hand, put you through rigorous tests that you passed, and now I've fed you a meal, and uh, so... I get it. Trust is hard to come by. That's part of the whole point of this whole exercise. You should never trust anyone, let alone yourself. So, but my point is, you think we've earned your trust, but you've done nothing to earn ours. Imply us with ducks and joints. Mm -hmm. We've got our own joints. And we can have our own ducks. Uh, this yeah. is true. I've never, I, you're quite capable, um, which is one reason why I want to help you out. I could make you more capable, in fact. How exactly are you going to do that? Hmm. And he kind of like looks over E and E, give me an insight check. Uh, that is a, hold on. Uh, 15. 15? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, it looks like he's been like, not sizing you up, but like kind of, there's a, a note of like, like he recognizes you or at least your, your build. And he's like, you look like more of an archaic model, but, and he kind of walks over to the trunk at the end of the bed and like, 
he opens the trunk up and then like reaches his arms like all the way in the trunk and then pulls out and it looks like he pulls out a set of what look like e unit arms um a left and a right arm and except it is slightly more advanced like the design is a lot smoother than your design but it's definitely of the same you know if you're like version 2.1 these look like they're version like 4.1 you know or 4.2 maybe yeah um 42 that's the answer to everything um and so but yeah like you know he's like i don't know they they might work but uh if you know someone that's good with a hammer um and he kind of like takes these arms and like holds them out to you he's just told holding these two big arms, but uh, they look... Yeah. He will take them. <laughs> if this was anything but a robot, this would look really fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, you look like you're just holding two arms that look like your arms, but slightly more aerodynamic. A little bit bulkier. Um, but smoother, smoother, you know, corners, curves, things like that. I did not know they made other versions. Where well, did you find these? Oh, uh, I don't know. Probably at least like 30 years ago. It's been a while. It was in that same area. Um, out in the dearth somewhere. I've been mm. at this battle quite a while. So. Have you seen the full versions of these? Uh, yes. Yes, I have. Hmm. I wonder Sorry. who is still making. Hmm. I had thought that my creators were lost. Well, somebody might have picked up the design. I'm not sure, but... I noticed your uh, your build, and uh, they're not doing me any good. Then he kind of like looks at Hilda, and he's like, "Hmm." And he goes back uh, to the uh, to the chest uh, and reaches in and pulls out a large leather bound tome that is buckled and locked, and he walks up and hands it to you. What what is this? Why are you giving me this? Why are you giving me something? I'm I am um this is to assist. Uh, I often find knowledge and wisdom in many texts and I think this will help uh, with yours. I will stare him in the eyes as I take the book. And he, he meets your gaze with uh, a steadiness and uh, sincerity? To be honest, I'd appreciate an apology for all the things that you put us through without giving us any warning that that's what was about to happen. I thought it was manip manipulative, unfair, and not a good way to start a relationship. Yeah. I, um... Well, then I'm sorry. I apologize for that. She'll stare at him a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Say thank you. And he inclines his head. <laughs> kind of like narrows his eyes at Elry. It's like, hmm. Ah, uh, and he, he walks over to the chest, and then he reaches in and pulls out. Um, it looks like a small, like baton, maybe, or a rod. Um, and he just kind of is like, "I used this for a while. Brought me a lot of luck." And he tosses it to you. My mage hand catches it. Your mage hand catches a a. A rod, maybe, uh, you know, not quite, about 10 inches long. A couple of runes play up the side of it. Uh, it's 
capped on one end. The other end is like open. Looks like maybe a gym is is at that end. Uh, and there's just one small uh, silver button. What does it do? Well, wield it and find out. Do I do I point it at you and push this button? I would prefer you didn't, um, but I mean you can. I mean, I'm not going to be a dick. I wonder if it was like it help you or it would hurt you. Everything's a mystery. Fall Every, groom. Everything is a mystery. Yes. We must think on right. our feet in this day and age. But if I wanted to kill you, I obviously would have done that. So, it, again, this is merely to help. Okay. Can I make an arcana check on it <laughs> with my sure. vast arcana skill? Sure. Go ahead and make an arcana check. Let's see if I can show this guy a trick or two. There's that 11 I needed. Uh, let me see. 11 plus 3, 14. 14? Um, I mean, you know, whether this is just a weirdly crafted, like a wand or a rod, I mean, it it, it looks like some form of, of weapon that uh, that projects something out of the gym end if you push the button. Okay. I was kind of hoping it was an immovable rod. I got like a million things I want to do with those, but I can't get a hold of one. Got any of those in that box? Unfortunately, no. Oh. All right. Thank you. Okay. Do you press the button at all? I point at the fireplace and press the button. <laughs> okay. You point at the fireplace and press the button. And a... Uh, a, a beam of energy slowly extends to about a distance of about two and a half feet and then stops and there's a low hum in the air. Is this a fucking lightsaber? Um, I, I've never heard it called that, but... Um, I just call it Is an it energy weapon, but... Uh, But what color yes, is it? I guess it is a saber that what? is made of what looks like light. So that's I'm not sure the legal uh, ramifications. Shh. Shh. Color. Shh. What's the color? The color. Color. The color is a uh, right now. It is a deep purple. You've mace windowed me. <laughs> windowed. I've been windowed. I don't do windows. No, sorry. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm getting closer to forgiving you for the fog room. I appreciate it. You're welcome. I am one X wing away from my master plan. <laughs> okay. Um, and with that, he, uh, he turns and looks at the cool. He's like, what, um, what Hilda mentioned before about the Neogi? Have y'all been, y'all been tracking them? Yes. You no, know, I've heard tale yes. of y'all having run-ins with them. Yes. Yeah. The most nasty one of your little trolls played their minds of bringing Axum Toll back into my life again. Axum Toll, you say? Yes. He is particularly vicious and active in this area. I'd heard that you had, uh, y'all had dispatched of him. Yes. Well, I could not do this personally. But he died with the information that I needed. Yes. Concerning my mother. Your mother, you say? Yes. She brought me into this world and disappeared, leaving me stranded among the monks. Hoxham has information and knowledge, and I believe he has. He knows her whereabouts. What gives you this, this idea? For... The uh, 
what was it? The necklace? I know it's uh, another sphere she was in. Um, oh, damn. Oh, I messed it up. Hell! What, the sphere that she's from? The Heliac sphere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, 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 I mean, no, he was no. searching for it, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, she, He knows where she is. Would you happen to know a connection between the Niyogi kidnapping people such as myself to be used for a grander scheme or plan? What, um... I don't know. What, what, where, where were they headed? Where did they go? Uh, you know? The sphere. Uh, Toho's. No, it was Toho. <laughs> but other spheres. Were they just in the Toho sphere? Where, where were they operating from? I need information. Uh, Oh man, I've got too many notes for you. Gotta help me. I forgot the spear we were at, the other spear we were at. Squad. Y'all started in Neros, yeah. Yes. I'm looking yeah. at my squad, like. Okay. I have help. to take notes on everything, apparently. <laughs> we first ran into them in the Nero sphere as they had been trying to kidnap some people on Nero's mm -hmm. four. I'd heard of an uptick in uh, their activity in this arm of the vortex. And then we had the, the 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 asteroid turd vision where they were coming out of the turd asteroids and like <laughs> harvesting people. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, having we were having yes. visions with this having... being visions of giant the yogi cap capturing people that look like floating around, standing on them, pushing their heads down, putting them in complete misery. Were they dreams? They felt real to me. Visions. Curves. Well, I did the asteroid field. Where where you were, was it familiar? Was were you, would you say it was in the Nerosphere itself? Yes. But I believe that you were having shared dreams with this Axon Toll. And if we that is the case. Yes, well, then if that is the case, then who knows how long he was watching you, if he could reach out into your dreams. So the Neurosphere, I know is where the answers to my mother lie. Why do you say that? It was told to me by another wizard the necklace, right? No, the earrings. The mm -hmm. necklace that he had, that what you learned from that is basically it helped him exert control on Umber Hulks. Like it, it amplified that effect and amplified uh, like mental coercion, things like that. Hmm. Uh, uh, what else? What else? I'm going to move over that. Uh, we did uh, run into them again over here in the Toho sphere when they were attacking Rotome. That was a very strange one, and that is where we faced off with the major antagonist. Mm hmm. Mm. Yes. We do yeah. have the name of the sphere that we believe they were looking for, the one that perhaps the cool's mother is related to. Yes. However, well. when I searched for information on it, it seemed to have just disappeared. Well, after the war, a lot of information disappeared um, with so much chaos and turmoil. Um, do you have do you have where they were searching? Do you know if they found they didn't find it, did they? The sphere you speak of? <clears throat> I do not no. think so. I believe that they required to cool in order to find it. However, we do have a possible location they were headed towards. We were able to recover from one of the ships. 
So you have their charting data. Yes, you could say yes. so. Ah. Well, I would be interested in seeing that. That is why we were considering the direction you were pointing out to us. It Might seemed I... they were headed somewhat in that direction. Do you uh, share the charting data with him? Unless the others are going to stop E. He <laughs> had very little self-awareness. Uh, <laughs> Elry's certainly not. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, E will just start kind of sharing the charting data. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, he throws up and looks at the uh, the charting data. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, let me. It's hard to type and talk at the same time. Um, <laughs> and kind of looks at it. Um, and kind of puts the two maps up side by side. And uh, y'all go ahead and give me a uh, intelligence roll. That is a 19. Four. Okay. Twelve. Twelve. Yeah. I mean, he. There's something awfully, awfully. When you look at these two maps side by side, there's something that. There's a lot of Neogi traffic. Um. In the areas that he's searching. Yeah, I pointed out. It appears that the Niyogi have been traversing this area. Mm, it looks like you are right. Wait a second. And he like takes the map and he overlays them. And you clearly see like in each circle, the Niyogi path crosses and crisscrosses and they always come to a, a single point in each of those areas and you see you see quentin Bazelon's eyebrows like raise up a little bit hmm you four four do you know what this means i would imagine it means that this is a point of interest as this is a place where they all converge quite possibly a base as we were speaking of before It could be a star, a dearth star. A dearth star, yes. <laughs> it's certainly no moon. Um, I think we figured out where they're getting their army from. Hmm. And he looks very like concerned at that. Are you speaking of the overseer's army? Well, it's just a uh, thought, but... They could be taking the humanoids they have been kidnapping to those places? Well, I know that the Elithids are building an army. The, no the Neogi are taking people. And now it seems like they are converging in two points of space. They very well could be working together. The chance that this is merely a coincidence is relatively low. Never tell me the odds. But yes, it's pretty low that it's just mere coincidence. Well, it is even more imperative. We must find these bases. 
find out what they're doing. Find out if there's some way to break this up. I believe that we could, I think this can be done. Is there anything else? I apologize. I'm sorry. As he kind of like snaps back um, from his reverie. I do not think so, unless there is a way to contact you as we do these discoveries, as it may be important if you say that we may be able to help each other. Yes. Just keep the ribbons. If you write a missive on a note and then wrap up that note with the ribbon, I will get it and I can respond in turn. Just think of it like um, a, a like a verbal sending or like a written sending, like it crosses over any distance, um, but you can just write, tie it up, and then he'll respond. That is quite fascinating. Yes. To anyone else, those ribbons will appear just sentimental keepsakes, but um, they allow our members to uh, talk with one another and with me. I can send you help from time to time, but uh, our numbers are spread thin. He kind of just looks over at Dekul and Ellery and Hilda and just kind of tilts their head. Well, um, without uh, any more delay, uh, the way is made clear, and he just kind of motions towards the door. Um, unless you have uh, anything I, else? You're being kicked out. <laughs> that cool that cool takes the hint uh, and and walks walks towards the door curious it's not the door we just came out it's the other door right no i mean he's motioning towards the door you came in uh, are we going back for your bag of trickery again no like i said the way is made clear well right. excellent i for one thank you for your great hospitality um I was wondering if I could get a little bit of more of that uh, silver smoky smoke for the road. You got like one more of those up in that. You know what? I need to quit anyway. And he like tosses you his his metal, like basically his cigarette box. Um, he tosses it to you. That's fortuitous because I was looking to become woefully dependent upon it. So thank you. Uh, that, that cool definitely thanks him. Uh, thank you for the information. Um, uh, yes. Uh, and he like waits until like E and everybody starts walking towards the door. He's like, actually, the cool, uh, if I could speak to you uh, for a moment in private, I would appreciate that. Of course. Uh, yeah, uh, he gives like a a glance over to everybody else looking. If they are looking, and tells them, like, give me a minute. You know? Okay. And as um, everybody kind of walks out the door and the door shuts, Dekul, you turn back uh, to Quint Quentin Bazelon and his half-elven mm -hmm. guys drops. And you see uh, a man or an elf, very much a dark elf. He's wearing leather armor, cloak pulled up, hood pulled low over his eyes. You see a, a, a shock of hair maybe sticking out. And this is the man, the elf that stands before you now. Uh, <clears throat> the cool, uh, forgive my 
deception, but I've not gotten to the position that I have without some manner of caution in my life. <clears throat> you seek the heliac sphere, yes? Yes. Mm. Many answers yes. you find there, I imagine. Yes. <clears throat> I can share yeah, not look. with you, Dakul. If it's something that you yes. desire. This is definitely absolutely something that I have desired all of my life. We finally get the answers. The, just the thought of having someone that looks like me in front of me. It's beyond words. I... There are more of us where I've come from, Dakul. We may have need of you yet. Seek your answers at the Heliac Sphere. And he passes, uh, Zillo uh, passes you a, uh, a crystal etched with a magical rune in it. What? What is this? A path. So that's what you seek and answers. <clears throat> when I see you again. Hmm. That is a complicated question to cool, for I do not enjoy being seen. How will I contact? You, the scroll Vincent gave you, it will, your message will get to me. Thank you. I am most curious. <laughs> I'll be damned. Another. Zilla slinks back into the shadows. A cool look at the items. He ponders deeply. He looks into the space of where he has now disappeared. <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely a slight smile across his face. And something he has not felt in quite a long time. Hope. The cool turns and head and looks towards the door of where his comrades have already passed. He nods to the empty space and heads out the door. Okay. And you. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm just having a bug out a little bit. And you walk out the door. And you are on the roof of this tower. Your friends are already waiting on you. There's the Don Rose. Yes. With an increase that a cool runs. <laughs> he hasn't run in quite some time. The swiftness of youth in his legs, screaming. Mm -hmm. Let's go. I have the answers. Okay. Yeah. Uh, heading, heading to the navigation room. <laughs> the helm. Um, uh, yeah, can we, can we, can we go? Can we roll? Yeah. You, uh, you hop on there. Um, do you, now there's the there's the rune with the crystal that has yes. the info, and then there is a small scroll alongside it. Yes, uh, man, I want to make sure that I am completely alone. I'm gonna go to my room uh, with just with, with just me and Helgen and and look at look at the scroll, just read it. 
Um, what does it say on it? Okay, you you pluck the uh, the rune itself out of the wax that holds it in place, and the scroll um, opens up. And as you read the words, you don't read them. You hear the voice of Zelo in your head. And it just says, good luck, my son. And that's where we're going to end tonight. As we're at the end of Starward Bound, with so many beginnings looming before us, Let's run around to cast and crew and see how everybody enjoyed being annoyed the shit out of tonight. <laughs> we are going to start in reverse order as we always do. Kiana, how's it going? Doing great as always. Uh, man, love this game so much. So nice to see Jim Davis. <laughs> it's like, oh. Hello. Okay. <laughs> I, I would click out of the Zoom during that moment, so I was real confused for a hot mm -hmm. second. Um, but no, that was fun. Um, yeah, we have a lot of... Thank God all of our story threads are kind of in one location, because there were several of them, and ease list of to-dos were kind of like, oh, this is getting long, so now mm -hmm. they can kind of condense them into, all right, here we go. Uh, yeah, so this was a lot of fun, and I'm super excited to see what we discover uh, along our wonderful journey through space. Um, yeah, but you can find me over on Twitter, at Ken S, best way to figure out what I am doing, because I'm all over the internet playing role-playing games almost every day of the week. However, I am going to plug this Friday, because I've got two awesome games. Uh, one, I am doing a one-shot of Teenagers from Outer Space. Um, it's getting pulled together, but it's going to be over on Laugh Love Lindy's channel. Um, and I'm going to have Travis on it, and I'm going to have Greg, I believe, just said yes to Lindy, so it's going to be fun. I am super excited to uh, do some real pulpy 70s bullshit of uh, teenage aliens. Uh, yeah. And also, Friday is also uh, the season finale for Adventures in the Wild Blue, which is the Lady Blackbird campaign I have been GMing this past season. Uh, super fun stuff. A lot of drama, a lot of feels, uh, all in the... Uh, steampunk sci-fi world uh so come watch and see me cry and make other people cry because you know what 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 finale would be <laughs> complete without a lot of punches to the feels yes you got to punch them right in the feel heart um all right uh awesome uh emma welcome back uh how, how, hey, how did something you... happen while i was gone uh, i'm sorry i, I just had to go uh, i don't know uh, wait a minute wait Wait. Emma left and Zelo showed up. Oh my god, Emma was Zelo the whole time. <laughs> the whole time. The whole time. I just occasionally turn into Jim Davis. <laughs> it's all me. I've never seen him in the same... Oh wait, we played D&D for 15 years. Never mind. Shit. Yeah, shit. I've been married to him for 13 <laughs> years. And we've been the whole per same person the whole time. <laughs> um, that was a fun one. I didn't know what to expect. I knew something was happening towards the end and I had no fucking idea what it was and I did not guess that it was that. And that was amazing. Um, well done, Pruitt. Thank you. That was a cool moment. Thank you. Um, well done, Jim Davis. I don't think he's here anymore. I think he's gone. Um, I love this game and I'm very happy that we get to play. And um, I don't have anything to plug that I'm doing right now. I don't have anything else planned since I lost RPG sports. Great. Grant. Since I lost that grant. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm the communications director for WebDM. Talk to us on Twitter and on Twitch and on the other one, the Facebook. Um, if you want to, you'll talk to me and you'll talk to the guys and it'll be wonderful. Uh, thank you so much. Awesome, awesome. Uh, moving on over, uh, Trey, how, how are you doing, man? You doing okay? Yo, um, yo, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, you, you hit me with, you hit me with, with the dopeness. Oh my gosh. Bruh, that, that was, yeah. Well done. Well, well done. Man, to just be a part of that moment, playing my head. That's really cool, man. Uh, this has been, 
this has just been one of those one of those days, man. Um, where just the unexpected has come, and this was a great uh, cherry on top. And uh, thank you, thank you, Jude. I, I I'm honored to 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 get a chance to be in your space, man, to be in your world. Uh, that, so I'm I'm grateful for that. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, my my name is uh, Fred Murphy. Uh, you can hit me on the on the on the Twitter sphere at um, at Sintel. Uh, also check out uh, Lights Camera Discover, um, where we teach the filmmaking process to, to, to the little ones. You reach us at lightscamerdiscover.org. Uh, just a little quick tidbit that I wanted to share with, uh, with our community. Um, uh, Lights Camera Discover, we just got uh, recognized by South by Southwest for our, for our contributions to the community. Uh, so I'll be at, I'll really the channel for being Southwest getting an award on the stage. <laughs> So it's like I said, it's been one of those days. Um, so I just wanted to share that because everybody's allowed me to to, to pitch it. So please check us out if you have time. Uh, I, I like I said, I'm a twenty square at Sintel and also at Instagram. What an incredible moment, bro! Thank y'all. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to have the "I am your father" moment without exactly the "I am your father" moment. Um, wait, wait. So you're going to be at South by Southwest like this next, as in here in Austin? Yeah, man. Uh, so you're, you're coming to Austin here pretty soon? Yeah, yeah, bro. Okay. <laughs> We're going to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I know. I know. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be one, one for the ages. Believe mm -hmm. that. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. We'll have to, uh, yeah, we'll live tweet it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> last but not least, uh, Greg, how you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing great. That was a fantastic ending to everything. Seeing Jim come in and uh, play that so well. Um, I really, really dug uh, the ending. I thought it was just so well played with the note. Uh, fantastic stuff all around. I, as Elry takes a step back and simply bows to the moment, I will say I am Grimjack21502 on the Twitches and the Twitters. Uh, join me over there to see what's going on. Tomorrow night, uh, Kiana and I may Black Roses Bloom, Dragonlance D&D 5E on the channel at 8. But uh, I'm still going to be thinking about father moments. And, uh, well, I will end with this. I did get a fucking lightsaber. <laughs> I'll see you guys next week. Most definitely. Uh, so, yeah, that that does it for Star Wars Bound tonight. Uh, one more mention to the to the sponsors, uh, or our sponsor, Tabletop Loot. Uh www.tabletoploot.com webdm15 15 off gets you the dice uh at a discounted rate so hit that up um we will be wait are we gonna be back next week yeah we'll be back next week of course we will yeah what am i thinking yeah uh, pack starts on thursday next week yeah anyway. and we get to hang out with kiana Woo! Yeah. And the, oh yeah that's right then, mm, anyway Awesome. So I uh, can't wait till next week uh, where we uh, start hunting some uh, some Neogi and some Elithids maybe. Uh, so let's can't wait for that. Uh, be back then. And I uh, just want to say thanks uh, one more time to uh, the artist, Alexa. Uh, I think we have her information in the uh, uh, in the chat there uh, for the wonderful art uh, that we did here or had here. Uh, and as we always say, uh, before we sign off here, uh, may the dice ever roll in your favor.